<laughs> Look, art keeps you young. Look at this oh, face. It's a lot of uh, athletic ventures and wheatgrass. <laughs> <laughs> Did you come up with this or like did the city approach um, no, you guys? the city came up with it. I've done utility boxes in this town. There's this, this big balance as artists or people trying to achieve beautiful things, being sensitive to everybody's needs, knowing you're not going to fill everybody's needs. Working with my family, my parents have put in so many hours with me to help me learning how to work even together on this project because it is so huge. It would take me months to finish a project like this. So what's the reason for this change? The artist has changed the color. You don't ask questions? It's big, 2,700 square feet. That's a lot. Total, the whole thing. Sort of like being at the beach. When you do a beautiful sand sculpture or a castle, a sand castle, it's gonna go away and it might go away within a few hours. Already up there, the panels that I finished, they've been driven over because, because that, this is the street and they're gonna get dirty and the leaves are gonna fall and the birds over the crow one that sit on the line, that's all pooped upon. I haven't really seen it recently, but I saw that they were doing a pretty good job of it already. Working in the wind and the cold and then it rained last night and I came down here early I walked down here as soon as I could to see what the puddles were and if a ton of dirt had come off the road The struggle that it is to do this style of art mm -hmm. What drew you to it and what makes you stick with it? What I love about a mural is that someone already wants it so when I design it and they say, we want your design, I get to then give my offering and I know that it has a home and I know that a lot of people, unexpected people, will be delighted by it. That is wonderful for me. So I'm interested in your experience with people's first impressions and how you couch this and whether or not you have gotten some pushback. The combination of the changes in the roads and the rerouting and the making greenways for bicycles, even though we're known as a bike town, um, is hard for some people because it takes up parking space. It's not to make this just for bikes. This is to make it inclusive of bikes and scooters and walkers. When people come and they, are, they aren't they are really sure what's going on here yet because just the color was down. And they're like, what does pink mean? My lavender color. What is this green? What does that aqua mean? These are bright colors. What is, th what's happening here? What's going on over here? We're this doing dog, movie. this is a dog park. That's the almost too much. That's interesting. I couldn't help but notice that just in the short time we've been here, there's been two sort of, what is this reactions? I've been running by these murals and I look at them as I run up and down. So I always run up oh. and down this street. And that was before I met you. Oh. Um, so the people like me who are enjoying it, sometimes we don't take the time to go, hey, I love this. So that you know, for every person who's like, I'm not sure, there's 10 people who are saying, yeah, 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 yeah. But the people who aren't sure, they're very vocal. And it sounds like maybe as creative people, just get used to explaining yourself. And when I hear your explanation, I hear a lot of empathy in there. That's, you know? I, I was just gonna say that. We need to really listen about people's concerns because there are concerns. And you know, I have a big truck, it's hard to get around the corner. I can totally empathize with that. And when somebody says, that's such a bright color, I start to think, wow, if I did this again, I walked all these neighborhoods, but I was thinking school, I was thinking bright, but I wasn't at that moment thinking somebody stepping out of their house, if that was my house. But the minute I put my feet in those shoes and I go, mm, would this delight me every day? You can always turn back. We forget about that. Right. If you make a mistake, you go, you're right, the blue was a little much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that would break your heart, but at the same time, if it were a process everyone went through, you'd probably be working on your next art piece, I'd imagine. Right. <laughs> well, that's the ocean in the sand castle, you know? You put it out there, you see if it works, but the ocean will take it eventually. Somebody's not going to like it. Sometimes I get a gift myself, 
that I wouldn't have gotten if I were just gonna do my plan. That's very reassuring to me because I sometimes fall into camp thinking. In a society, you've got to accommodate the complaints, mm -hmm. you know, but you also have to accommodate the freedom. Mm -hmm. And nowadays more than ever, I'm feeling like, you know, this mural might not just be about the art, it might be about how everyone interprets it. Mm -hmm. So I think everybody's dealing with this issue of when does my area uh -huh. enter your area, mm -hmm. you know, and what's the shared area, and what are the rules, how do we accommodate mm -hmm. the homeless population, mm -hmm. how do we accommodate different political points of view. If we give each other the opportunity to sit in each other's shoes, and that's hard when we have high emotions or high feelings about something, but with understanding, we might have a shift. I don't see everyone else holding themselves to that same standard, and I'm interested in why that standard. You know, where where does the where does the reason come from for, I mean, you don't even look like you have any doubt about this. This has to get done no matter what. Yeah. Oh, it does. <laughs> <laughs> That's the work ethic that was instilled in me. By who, this guy? Uh, well, yeah, family. I like, I like working. Matter of fact, working is my hobby. They call it workaholism. I don't call it workaholism. If you're happy doing what you're doing, it's not workaholism. No, this is a lot of fun. <laughs> Tiring, yes, but I'm used to that. I usually come home every day tired, and it feels good. It feels good. We're a pretty motivated family to finish what we start. And when you're passionate about something, you, you kind of do it to the, you know, to the nth degree. It needs to get finished and, and you have to use the energy while it's there because the energy will go away. Maybe it's like childbirth. I don't remember it being as grueling as That's this. That's the secret. <gasps> it's hard work living and it's hard work creating. Whether you're raising a family or you're doing a big mural or you've got a book you're writing or whatever. Everybody sees, oh, the book, oh, the painting, but it's hard to wake up and go to work whether regardless of what you're doing whether it's a mural or you're going to school or you're doing it's hard to motivate ourselves to keep going but there's moments you know getting to have this time with my family even though there's moments of emotion and you know or frustration or tiredness or whatever the end sometimes does allow the middle part to keep going. For me, I'm motivated by fruition. I need to go to the end. I need to run over the mountain, not at my detriment, but I need to finish. I need to finish. And I promise, and that to me is the relationship, I promised the city that I would finish. Stress is a wonderful way to really get to know yourself, I think. This beautiful yeah. woman. How weird is this? I just get to film you and ask you whatever I want and connect with you. I love my life. Hopefully it's not all caution. <laughs> no, it's a metaphor.